Rich Caro. Good evening. I transitioned into quilt making out of found object sculpture in 1999. This is a piece called Kestrel with Spaghetti Betty. That's Betty on each side of the triptych. You'll find her on the DiCecco pasta box. And just as I found uh, bits of paper and glass to create narratives, and I, I now find fabric to create narratives. Some of my quilts were hoopas, Jewish wedding canopies. This is one from a series of star quilts. These quilts helped me to refine my material process, curved piecing, for instance, and they also helped me to understand the spiritual connections in quilts and quilt making. I recently noticed how things seem to float in my quilts. For instance, how this crown hovers over the landscape. I'm not sure why this is, but I think it has something to do with how narratives are formed on the surface of utilitarian objects and how a broader vocabulary is available for telling stories. I came up with this improvisational patchwork technique to, to uh, construct these quilts. This image of uh, Florence, Italy is made up of pieces that suggest both parts and holes. I use a mix of fabrics, including novelty fabrics from a quilt shop. For example, the Buddha prints on each side framing the city. This next quilt is called The City for Jean Lacey. Jean Lacey is a Dallas, Texas artist and a mentor of mine. The quilt was made for her, but it's not a September 11th quilt. I started in 2000, and it commemorates the African burial ground in Lower Manhattan. Everything sort of floats in it. The island, the Cadillac symbol. This is called Vision, this quilt, and everything sort of floats in this one too. The, Vir the Virgin of Guadalupe print in the upper right-hand corner hovers above the white deer in a brightly colored desert landscape. The fabrics in the quilt reflect light in different ways, and that helped me to understand how light plays off of textiles. This quilt illustrates the idea. Light reflecting off fibers in the fabric and the weave structure, creating shadows. The surface of every quilt contains multiple patterns of light. In the weave of the fabric, in the seams, and in the quilt stitches. Every fabric has its own character, and it's up to us in how we see it. The strip quilts in this installation incorporate the edge of the fabric called the selvage. The quilts are made to fit in the space, seven quilts made with a technique called foundation piecing. A seamstress gave me fabric remnants that included yards and yards of selvage. The selvage on the edge of the wool fabric often has a media descriptive text woven into it. I like how the text becomes part of the pattern. The quilt is sort of a giant log cabin quilt block. When it was installed, an emergency light poked out of the square cut out in the center of the quilt. When I collected enough polyester, nylon, and acrylic fabric, I turned them into a totem pole quilt. It's 30 feet high and has a mechanism so that it swings around the pole and doesn't catch the wind. It's a totem quilt with a specific narrative connected to the images. Quilts are similar to totem poles, I think. Both are objects with social and spiritual narratives constructed on their surfaces. In addition, I see quilts as an archetypal craft form, and they contain and connect to archetypal patterns of creation. This next picture is a picture of my open-air studio that I created. I moved my sewing machine out into an easy-up tent and worked like a plein air landscape painter. It, the setup offered a new insight. Working outside helped me to, uh, to see the temporary and fragile quality of fabric. This is the landscape quilt that I produced that summer. While working in this way, I experienced the flexibility of the fabric and the medium in new ways. In the studio, I felt like I was manipulating fabric, and outside, I felt like I was working with fabric to create quilts. So working with fabric lets me build narrative, uh, material narratives instead of uh, linear narratives. This is a basket weave variation made out of corduroy. The narrative surface is not linear, but it's a personal creative narrative. In this case, the basket weave pattern highlights a different sort of reflection and shadow. 
This is my son Elijah in the studio. We're working on a quilt made out of novelty fabrics. Although I like to work with found fabrics that I find at secondhand shops and lawn sales, uh, novelty fabrics have a wonderful narrative possibility. We're using um, some of the same fabrics, but I think we're working on different narratives. Uh, the trick to working with these fabrics is to juxtapose the prints so that uh, animals are with machines, helicopters with fish, trains with dinosaurs. The helicopters and the fish over here on the right side are particularly interesting, work well together. Some of the novelty prints in there I'd had for many years, the Hot Wheels fabric that was in there I'd used a lot. This is a photo of my studio. In the photo, I'm about to start hand piecing a quilt. That's going to be an example for a quilt class that I'm teaching. It's taken me years to figure out how to teach quilt making. Basically, the process is to combine hand sewing, found fabric, simple tools and techniques, and a social setting. I supply everything for the class. Fabric, needles, threads, scissors, beeswax, pins, a dark and light colored pencil, a thimble, and a copy of D.M. Dooling's 1979 book, A Way of Working, The Spiritual Dimension of Craft. These are two of my quilts in process for that class. Uh, I ask that the students take pictures of their quilts, too. In the image on the left, you can see that we've um, projected some of the quilts next to the actual quilt tops so that we can explore the quilt making process. I think that we become quilt makers and that we don't just learn to make quilts. This quilt, the final quilt, is called Nine Pigeons. I didn't intentionally create the left facing profile that is created out of the white fabric, but it looks like a face anyway. The pigeons then change from birds into ideas and thoughts. And it's a picture of creativity then. Thank you.